so let's talk about this film first and foremost. Uh, what did you think when you first heard the premise? Because I love, especially when it comes to horror films, I love a movie that's got that great elevator pitch, right? Where you can describe what the setup is in like a sentence or two and go, ah, I'd watch that. You know, what, what did you think yeah, when, you uh, first, when you first heard about what this movie was all about? Oh my goodness. First of all, um, I really wanted to work with Alistair, who's the director, because I saw his film From a House on Willow Street. Mm -hmm. So when he contacted me, I was so, so excited already. And then reading the script, I, <laughs> first of all, I was laughing because I thought it was so amazing. The humor is so great. And it's not often that you get a script where you're laughing. Usually it's more serious or something. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was hilarious. Um, I remember telling him that and he's like, well, it's, it's not a comedy, Liesl. Why, why, why are you saying it's funny? <laughs> he's, just, he's just cool like that. But anyways, no. Um, but I just love the concept. I thought it was so amazing putting people who know each other, people who are friends or mm -hmm. supposedly friends, um, but are couples against each other. Because in the Saw franchise, it's usually strangers, you know? Right. So I, I really liked that that concept i thought it was amazing and obviously just the vests i think that is genius i think that's mm -hmm. completely new and just so cool so, yeah epic i was so excited i was like i need to get this role <laughs> yeah and I, and I love that i think probably my favorite thing about it and about the premise like you said since the characters all know each other ahead of time that you were I mean, great storytelling, right, is when you take characters and you kind of establish who they are and then you put them in a situation that tests their limits and really reveals more about who they are. And, you know, we're used to a lot of stories with antagonists who are very heroic, right? And so, you, you know, you put Indiana Jones in the worst predicament and he's going to save the day. And I love a film <laughs> like this where... So uh, some folks uh, have a real dark side that ends up getting revealed <laughs> in the situation. Exactly. Um, and I think that that's amazing because in real life, you never know, are you going to be fight or are you going to be flight when something happens to you? You don't know until yes. you're in that situation. And I think it kind of taps into that human, um, yeah, like at, we as like human beings, how are you going to be? Are you going to would you kill your friends or would you not? Like, right. Would you die instead? <laughs> right. And, and we all, of course, like to think of ourselves when not actually in that predicament that, oh, of course, we would, you know, self-sacrifice okay. and put others before us and, you know, all that good stuff. And but you never know when the chips are down, like that's really going to reveal where, where someone's at, you know, where, where their priorities yeah. are. Sink exactly. or swim. You know, it's like the... Uh, the old saying, you know, there's no atheists in foxholes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I just, I just traveled for the first time during the pandemic and I'm a little <laughs> bit of a nervous flyer anyway. And on my, on my last of four flights, uh, there was really bad turbulence. And yeah, it's that thing where like, you're sitting in this bad turbulence and all of a sudden you're thinking about life and death and what do you believe and where, you know, and, I love movies like this because they put characters right in that situation where it's, you know, you know, exactly. generally as a human being that you could die at any time in any situation. But when you have a bomb strapped to you with a <laughs> ticking clock, <laughs> it's uh, it, it forces really you to think about these things. Like I'm the same. I'm also kind of a nervous flyer. And I also had this really bad turbulence incident where yeah all of a sudden you start to think about your life differently your life yeah. like flashes in front of you and you're like these are the decisions i've made this is yes. you know, yes. who i am am i happy with this you know and I, I think that's cool about the film um it's it's a very heavy topic like we, we're mm -hmm. both saying but it has this lightness to it with yes. sense of humor and and because i know a lot of my friends have been um, asking me they were like listen um you all like just go crazy and kill each other. Like, why do we want to watch this? Is it going to be super gory and like, you know, like uh, more traumatic and stuff? And I was like, no, I think it feels like you're in a video game and you're just yeah. like, oh, he's dying. Now he's dying. Who's dying next? It's yes. more, yeah. You know, it's, it's and it's more almost like, and it's almost like the countdowns and everything are like the, the health, like the power ups that you see in a video game. You know, like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, 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 I think. Um, David D. Jones, the scriptwriter, he, he found a really cool balance between making you think about something, but also mm -hmm. just keeping it light, entertainment with popcorn. You could just 
you know, chill watching the film, have a good time. It's yeah. not too um, disturbing, I guess, in that sense, or too traumatic to watch. Yeah, and, uh, and there's, I really enjoy the pacing of this movie. It has a lot of momentum to it, where it, and, and that, that keeps it, you know, you always feel like a, some sort of fiend when you describe a horror film as fun. <laughs> but, uh, but that's part of the fun of this movie, is that it, it, it moves right along, and it's, um, it establishes, you know, from the outset that the stakes are, are high, you know, and I think a lot of great horror films, Scream is a good example, you know, by mm -hmm. putting Drew Barrymore in the middle of the poster and her being the only star you had heard of, and then her character getting killed in the first, oh, in the opening scene, <laughs> yeah, and the movie's exactly. just establishing right out of the gate, like, okay, anyone, anything can happen. Yeah, 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 listen, and, uh, this is, yeah. Yeah, one of the... From one of the first yeah. pandemic films was uh, that movie, The Hunt. And that, without spoiling it, since people might not have seen it yet, it, it had a similar setup where you would see these recognizable actors and you'd go, oh, well, this must be the star of the movie. <laughs> and then they're dead. And then you're like, oh, no, I guess it's this other oh. character. Um, wow. This I movie has, has that Thrones... vibe too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Game of Thrones really like kind of introduced that whole concept yes. of shocking the audience with making their yes. favorite like, main characters die. And I think it's amazing because, yeah, you're going to watch. You want to see who's going to die. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in terms of, of your character, Aaron, in this movie, uh, and obviously without giving too much away, what, uh, what was your approach to her in terms of, you know, it's, it's got to be interesting to play someone I mean, do you go into it thinking about how you you know all the secrets that are coming and things that are, are going to be revealed? Or do you approach it more from we need to see the characters as a blank slate at the beginning before we learn more about them? I guess sort of what I, kind of a question about process. Like what's your what's your method for that when you're when you're in the scene? No, that's a really good question. Um, I kind of did a, a combo with that. I feel like. I feel like, yeah, without giving any spoilers, but I feel like what's cool about Erin is that she's she's very mysterious. And I think that's something that I kept from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, even if she's just sitting by the fire, um, okay, cool, you might read her just being an introvert. But in my mind, I was thinking, um, she knows she's got this like inner strength to her. She knows that, um, I think she really knows who she is, if that makes sense. And I think yeah. when she talks to Ezra, it, it comes through like, like she knows who she is. Um, and, but no, as an actor, I would always like play the scene as if I have no idea what's, what's going to happen in the next scene. Uh -huh. What's going to happen now? What's going to, you know, cause you never want to like think ahead. Um, cause that might um, change your performance too much. I think with Erin, I was just constantly trying to, um, challenge a stereotype that I feel like people have attached to introverts where mm. she, oh is she a mute oh she's so boring she's not fun yeah. and I have so many so many friends who are introverts and they're my favorite types of people because they only speak when they have something you know incredible to say and me being an extrovert, I like look up to that. I'm like, wow, that's so incredible that you have this kind of like, I don't know, it's just this aura around them. And I really wanted to challenge that. I wanted to show people that, let's think about this. There's so many more layers to all of us. Like I'm an extrovert, Indeed. but I'm also an introvert sometimes. And I think quarantine told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. coping really well. I was like on my own, it's great. Um, you know, so yeah, I wanted to show like different facets um, to people. And, you know, people aren't always just what they seem. And I, and I love that about Erin, is that she had, she felt to me like a real person, like one of my friends who, you know, have an inner strength, even though people might say, oh, what a wallflower, or she's so quiet and shy, you know? Yeah. Um, I, think, I think she's such an incredible character. It's probably my favorite character I've ever gotten to play. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I, I love that idea, like you said, of, uh, with introverts where, you know, I'm reminded of of Silent Bob in the Kevin Smith movies where he doesn't say anything for the entire film and then he'll deliver this like, you know, five page monologue. And the idea of that uh, the less is more, you know, it's like, okay, no, now this person is talking and we're all tuned in because, you know, you have- Yeah, now it. everybody's listening, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
It's the most to have a sense of power. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I, I think it's fascinating. I find it so fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, having also done friend request, and uh, you know, being a you know a demon. <laughs> 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 um, you know, you've got, you've gotten, to, that coming. <laughs> yeah. you, you've gotten to play in this, this space of these, uh, kind of high concept driven horror films that are also fun. <laughs> Is that, yeah, you know, are, do, do you find yourself drawn to that, uh, that sort of tone and that sort of, um, you know, when you get those kind of scripts or those, the ones where you're like, oh yeah, I want to do this. Oh my goodness, it's so it's so cool that you're I'm asking me this because what happened um, was Friend Request. It was the first script that I'd ever seen that was a horror movie. Oh wow! So I was like, oh, that's really cool. And um, because I'm in South Africa, I don't know if it's something that happens here. Or I don't really know what the process was, but I didn't see the the full the full script. Um, I only saw it after I booked the role, like after I'd signed mm -hmm. the contract. I was like oh, I turned into a demon? Like, I didn't know. <laughs> so I, I auditioned as, oh, Marina. Oh, cool. Okay, creepy girl. You know, yeah. she's got a disorder. I'm like, wow, so drawn to this character. And I love that character till this and day. And then after you signed, they said, oh, by the way, you're going to be in the makeup chair all day. <laughs> no jokes. They were like, listen, um, so we have to talk. You're going to you're gonna wear stilts. You're going to, first of all, learn how to walk on them. And then also, full <laughs> prosthetics, fake hands, fake sharp teeth, ink in your mouth. It's going to be great, you know, contact lenses, yeah. everything. Um, but so I didn't, I didn't actually know that, but it wasn't a bad thing. I was like, oh, oh, exciting. You know, why? Yeah. Who, who doesn't want to get an experience to have like be covered in prosthetics? Of I course. Think. And, it, and of know, course it sounds a lot more fun and I think is more fun the first couple of times before it gets tedious, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Getting all that no, off. I, I enjoyed it so much. It was just way too, I felt like it was such an honor to be in that position. I feel like you can have a successful acting career and maybe never have the opportunity to really have like, you know, full That's prosthetics. absolutely true. Yeah, that's such a great attitude to have about it as well. I remember years ago, I visited the set of X-Men 2 and was interviewing Alan Cumming who played Nightcrawler in that film. And he's, you know, blue skin, contact lenses, yeah. fingernails, a tail. And he had, uh, these very detailed tattoos covering his body. And I remember him saying like, yeah, I was just so, you know, I was really involved in the design for the character and all the different stuff we were going to do. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And let's do that. And, oh yeah. The tattoos. And, and he was like, now that I'm getting in this every day, he's like, I probably would have said no to the tattoos. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, there's probably a couple of things that I would have said, actually, we don't need this. <laughs> So I, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely true. I mean, like the first day you're like, yeah. yeah. And the second day they're like giving you coffee through a straw. Someone's yeah. holding the cup because your hands like can't do anything. You're like, oh, well, okay, you know. But but no, to me, it was just way too much fun. And just seeing yourself transform. Yeah. That, that was like such a like blessing in my life. Like I feel like as an actor, that's something that you like hope for. Oh, is yeah. To sit there and see how other people's talents like this collaborative process that was just so inspiring. Yeah, to all those people that have all those different roles that, that come together to create that. And also the, you know, the beauty of practical effects, you know, when CGI is used as an enhancement as opposed to a replacement, you know, I, I think that's, you never know how many, like you said, how many opportunities you're going to get to do that when it's, it's uh, an art yeah. that is disappearing in a lot of ways. No, I love it. And I remember seeing the one scene in Friend Request where I had this like these bugs on my face and I was like, whoa, oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> now people actually think I'm super brave and I had bugs on my face. That was a post. <laughs> they did that <laughs> there's no way I would have done that. Yeah. I have a line, you know, there's a line. But um, to get back to your question, so Friend Request was the first script that I had that was like, that I ever saw, I guess. Uh -huh. It was a horror film. But um, I don't know, ever since friend, I did Friend Request, I guess I'm kind of drawn to films, to thrillers or horror films, because it's like you said, it's life and death stakes from the get go. Mm -hmm. Like, what more do you want as an actor to be put in like a crazy position? You know, the pace yeah. of the film is usually, like you said, was triggered. It's like spot on. And and I, I feel it's there's such a thrill knowing that the audience members are sitting there at the edge of their seats wanting to know what's going to happen watching 100%. like what are you going to do and yeah. i think that's that's a, the best thing about acting in like a thriller or a horror film you know mm -hmm. people are like 
constantly like, what's going to happen? And and I love that idea of, uh, of an ensemble but it, you know, it's like 12 Angry Men or, you know, a lot of uh, classic stories where it's like you've got these nine characters and what are we going to learn about each of them as we go uh, and, before, and before each of them is gone because then you have that extra <laughs> element of the, of the horror premise. Um, yeah, yeah. Super fun. Ha- have you seen, you know, there's the, there's the poster for the movie, you know, with the axe and, and obviously the, the bomb. But have you seen the other one that's like the illustrated Yes, I did. I did see that one. Isn't that I just so it. cool to see yourself rendered? And it, it looks like an old video game or board game or action figure box or something. Like, that has I to be so cool. It. And I'm holding a hammer, so I'm like, I'm Lady <laughs> Thor. Oh, my goodness. And then, <laughs> nowhere in the film do I touch a hammer. Like, it's oh, that's so fun. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> But that's what you gotta love about, you know. But Alistair, the director, showed me this, and he was like, "Okay, listen, you're holding a hammer. I know, I know you. You never had one in the film, but you know, just go with it." I'm like, yeah, "Artistic it's license, awesome. you know, creative, you know, yeah. Can't you just can't you just hear people at you know, when the world returns to normalcy and you're at like a horror convention and fans are like, so in the poster, you're holding a hammer. You know, is that a deleted scene or like what happened? Yeah." <laughs> Exactly. That, that's what you want is people to get really into it too yeah to people to get really invested exactly <laughs> uh, so yeah so you mentioned Alistair and, and wanting to work with him and um you know some of his his great stuff that he's done in the genre um did you obviously you were familiar with his work beforehand did you then go back once you got this movie and watch all of his films or what you know how 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 deep into the Alistair rabbit hole have you gone <laughs> That's actually such a good question. It's making me feel a bit bad because I didn't even think um, that that would have probably been an awesome thing to have done. <laughs> but no, I, I saw um, from House on Willow Street. I remember this, I think it was like two years ago or something um, at my house. And this was obviously before Triggered was even like an idea yet or like pitched to us. Um, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow. Oh, my goodness. Chills. Wow. Because. I have so much respect for South African directors, you know, just in general, because I feel like we have to push ourselves like as actors and directors um, so much harder, I guess, to kind of get into the international realm. Of course. Like, yeah. that. Um, you know, and I felt with that film that Alistair just, you know, knocked it out of the park. To me, I would have, you know, I would have said it's an American director. I'd, I don't know. Like, I just felt like it was on par um, yeah. with what he wanted to do. and. To me, like people who have a vision, it just inspires me to create. And I feel like that's what we need and what the world needs now, especially during this time, is for people to really inspire one another creatively. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what Alistair did to me. And when he contacted me, I was like, wow, it's like it's full circle now, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was just amazing. But I, I've yet to see actually um, Indigenous. I haven't seen that yet. Um, and I heard that's fantastic. Um, someone who interviewed me once said, that's a great film. So I, I actually want to see that. You've sparked something here. That's probably what I'm <laughs> yeah. going to be tonight. Well, we've got time. We're at home. <laughs> yeah, might as well watch it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's, as you said, I mean, there's something, there, there's a power in that when you have a film community, you're coming from a, a different part of the world where there isn't the same expectation to even just be able to make something that feels as though, you know, you don't watch it and go like, Oh, this is a South African film. You know what I mean? It just, it's just a movie. It just, it's like a movie, like any other movie made anywhere else. Um, yeah. And that, that's a feat in and of itself. Uh, it, it's kind of like great editing, right? Like you don't, the best editing is when you don't notice the editing. <laughs> you shouldn't be yeah. like, Oh, look at that great cut. Look at this editing. You should just be immersed in watching it. And it's kind of the same thing. You're not like, well, this is great for a South African director. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. no, this is just fun for any, this could be anyone. Um, yeah. I, I love, you know, I, I've been having this conversation a lot recently. I just had it the other day with a friend of mine. You know, I think the, her, the like the twilight zone really perfected storytelling um and it's not an original idea there's books about this and and stuff but i love movies like triggered that could work as like you know it's like an extended twilight zone episode where it's like here's the idea here's the setup here's our characters and then here here are the things we're going to learn as we go on this journey 
yes. uh, you know, and like, here's what this story has to say. And um, I'm personally drawn to those. So I can only imagine, yeah, exactly. When you saw a script like this, they were like, yes, I'll do that. I want to do that. Yeah, almost definitely. Yes. No. And I feel like I, I'm so proud to say that this this film was just all South African cast and crew. Yeah. And I feel like I need to do a shout out because when we were doing friend requests, the entire crew was oh no, sorry, partially, like 50% of the crew was South African and 50% were German. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've gotten so many compliments on how efficient and how hardworking our South African crew is. And was triggered, we only shot for 11 days. We so were supposed sad. to shoot for 17 days and 11 days, that's like, like a week basically, right? Yeah. And we that's only like, did- that, That's like 10, year, 10, 15 years ago, that's like a music video. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's like Taylor's music video. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So um, it was crazy because it started raining and it threw us off a bit and people were like, you know, sliding around in the mud. Someone got injured and it was, you know, it was quite crazy. So we had to wait for the rain and that threw us off. Um, and, you know, with a low budget film, you only have 11 days. And I think what's beautiful is the camaraderie that comes out of that. People are mm -hmm. like, you start to realize that everyone there is there because they want to be there. Yeah. They want to make a film that is something that resembles something that they watched as a teenager and made them fall in love with films. And yes. um, I get goosebumps just saying that because I know that's what drives Alistair. He's been in love with, you know, films, just watching films for so long. And obviously to him, it's a dream to have a film that's, um, like we said, on the level of these films that he's mm -hmm. been watching. And I think he did such a great job with Triggered. And um, like I said, only having 11 days and night shoots, um, it was it was quite and rain. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And rain and being like a real wood setting um, with spiders and, you know, tripping over tree chunks and everything it was just so cool um you know to see how how much like how hard people are willing willing to work and how much people are willing to give to create something together um and and that's why this film is really special to me i i, I feel very um connected to it in that way and i think um, people should know that it's made by people who were just so amped to make this film and just wanted to get together and give it their all. And, you know, even if it meant like tripping over tree trunks or like <laughs> having been covered in spiders, we were all just like, let's do this, you know? Yeah. So. Man, in 11 days too. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> it's so crazy. The breakneck speed of that. Uh, so I, I got to ask you why, why I have you. Um, what's coming up next for you uh i know it's it's obviously the weirdest time to be booking work and figuring out what you're gonna do but um you know what's coming up next for you and, and how have you been keeping yourself occupied in this craziness we're all living in awesome yeah no i i am I'm really lucky like just after no, sorry. Just before Triggered, I shot um, another film, also by a South African director. It's called The Construct. It's a psychological thriller. So we're thinking that it might be released next year. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Awesome. And then in my free time, I also have a clothing label. So I've been working on my clothing label. I brought this, I launched this bikini line that I just did. So that's available online. I'm also a songwriter and I recently... Mm -hmm. Um, wrote a song for a South African artist called John Neal. Um, he signed to one of South Africa's biggest music labels, Just Music South Africa, and he's launching his CD um, in November. So oh, wow. I'm just super right happy. That's in a couple of days. Yeah, in like in a, yeah, like in a couple of days. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's really exciting for me because I've been able to tap into other creative things mm -hmm. to kind of you know, um, make up, like you said, make up for the fact that there hasn't been, um, I've been doing a couple of self tapes, as you can imagine, but yes, it's not, it's not the same. And obviously internationals can, you know, can fly in, can come to South Africa to make films like they usually did. Um, but yeah, I think, I think things will soon, let's, let's hope and pray, but we'll soon be back to normal again. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, well, hopefully they'll start to shoot a lot more films here again. Um, and that's just uh, you know i've amazing. never i've never been i have friends who have visited and uh, it's definitely on my oh. list of places i would like to go despite my hesitation and discomfort with flying i do fly um but uh yeah that's definitely somewhere that that i've always wanted to see 
Um, <laughs> Beautiful here. It's lovely. You'll love it. You can go on safaris and it would be an amazing experience. I know my friends from Canada who came, they're all just like blown away. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, Charlize Theron and, and uh, Trevor Noah. And, you know, there's a lot of great ambassadors for South Africa here in America. Oh, yeah, they're the best. We love them here. We're like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, go for it. Yeah. They're like <laughs> our king and queen, you know. We love them. <laughs> we love, love them. <laughs> yeah, I knew you. I knew you were a musician, also, and that was the last thing I wanted to ask you about. Um, especially given that Knotfest has a music and movies bent, you know, we're always curious um, about the musical side, and also even just what you're listening to or what's what's been inspiring you um, in this quarantine. I must say Taylor Swift's new album was just like such a gift during quarantine <laughs> because my, my favorite band has always been The National. Oh, right. Um, yeah, so I just love that collaboration that she did. Yeah, um, I love that listening... it's a rock record too. You know? Yeah, me yeah. too. I love it. And, and, it has, I feel like... and it has like a very metal album cover. <laughs> it looks like a, like a, yes, like a yes. death metal and band I love or like, something. Yeah. It, it feels like a lot like poetry in a way. I feel like I could never get tired of the songs. I don't know. It's, it's you know, good background music, but also not like it's it's got a good like balance to it. I really love it. Um, and I've been listening to a lot of Gracie Abrams. I'm I love The Weeknd. I love Halsey. I love Post Malone. I love lots of Afrikaans bands as well, because um, that's my native language is Afrikaans. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've just been listening to to so it, it's been getting me through quarantine. Really, it's basically music and movies. I guess <laughs> that's, that's my <laughs> life. <laughs> um, and also songwriting, uh, writing songs. Um, in the beginning of the quarantine, I did a 21 day songwriting challenge. And it was so funny. I was like posting it on social media. Like, yeah, guys, I just started this, you know, please follow this trend. Nobody did. And it's <laughs> good that they didn't because it was so, it was, it was so tricky. I was like, a song a day? Whoa, let's, <laughs> let's hold up a bit. That was a bit too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but okay uh, but i ended up completing like finishing the 21 songs unfortunately oh, nice. not 21 days like a bit longer i guess i mean uh, hey there's bands there's artists that, that don't put out records more than every five or six years so yeah, <laughs> 21 I, songs I totally, and... I totally get that now like i'm like it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. it totally makes sense Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's great. But on, on my um, ninth day of my 21 day songwriting challenge, I wrote a song called Home. Um, and I got an incredible artist in South Africa to record a demo for me. And I entered it into the European Songwriting Awards. And I got nominated for an award. So that was really cool. Yeah. So that was something that, you know, it keeps you going, you know, during quarantine to, to do these creative endeavors and like, um, I love competitions for that reason. Songwriting competitions. It just mm -hmm. keeps artists, you know, motivated and motivated to create um, and inspired. And I think it's so important to, yeah, feel inspired. And it's in a way to engage an audience that might not otherwise pay attention if you can put it in the context of a competition yeah. and, a, you know. Yeah, exactly, a, exactly. It gets you a chance to be heard, you know, and I feel like that's the same thing with film festivals for films. Um, I know Alistair and Ari, the producer, they were also lucky when Trigger got into Fright Fest and Grim Fest because, you know, it, it gets, um, the, you know, the right people to see it. And it's just fun to know that there's an audience, people watching, um, mm -hmm. enjoying it, even if it's from home. Um, but yeah, I love, I love, um, create you know the fact that creative things are kind of connected to me like if you write a song it inspires your acting if yes. you act it inspires writing and you know that they're kind of connected and that you can feel I feel you know, exactly the, the same way and it didn't and people didn't always that wasn't always the perception but I absolutely these you know you hear about side hustles and whatever people are a little more open to or you know even bands where they have like the side project we're starting to understand that each of those things can be just as full of a representation of someone as the other thing and that they are all interconnected even when they seem disparate. So yeah, I absolutely agree. I, even in my own life, just, you know, doing more than one thing. And sometimes people go, oh, it's crazy you do this and this and this. Yeah. And to me, it's all interconnected. They're all feeding exactly. each other. Exactly. It's feeding off each other. And that's why I, I love artists like Halsey, who's like, 
she like paints a self portrait in her music video and she actually paints it or she does her makeup she does her own makeup and she does special effects makeup and you know she writes poetry and then she writes songs she also sings she's acting now and i feel like that's just such an inspiration because maybe you can't sing so you're like okay cool she's a singer but you've always been interested in special effects makeup you're like well this is inspiring me now you know she just has so many facets that um gives her i want to say more opportunity to inspire and reach more people um oh. which which i love yeah totally agree. well you are so talented you are so charming uh the dimples have been killing me this whole time People, people have mentioned my dimples all my life and I never really understood. And right now I understand. I'm like, oh, this yeah, I just wanted to say you have dimples. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is why it's a thing. Cause it's just like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you so well, much. You don't notice them as, as well. Like you don't notice your own dimples, but you notice. Exactly. Them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And when people bring it up, I, I usually forget that I have them. But then, yeah. But sitting here talking with you, I'm like, oh, no wonder people always bring it up. Cause it's so <laughs> That's great. Thank so, you so much. <laughs> now I feel much more blessed having having them myself. <laughs> um, I'm so happy. I have the on you. <laughs> I'm um, so happy to be grateful for your dimples now. Same yes, here. yes. Thank you. Thank you for your 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 beauty has given me some self affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure. Uh, well, thanks, um, Ryan. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, this is so fun. Um, and. Best of luck and success with music, with movies, with this movie, of course. It's a lot of fun. I've been telling everybody that it's a lot of fun. And um, and then, yeah, it's great to know that, we'll, that there's already something in the can that we'll see in next year. And so, yeah, come back and talk to us for Screen Crusades and Not Best anytime you like. You're always welcome. I'd love to. Thank you. This was so special. I really enjoyed this. Thank awesome. you so Likewise. much for having me. <laughs>